It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Michel Kenmo, who will in a few minutes share with us his insights on challenges and opportunities for OER integration across countries in West Africa. Michel, a very warm welcome to you. Um, just a few words on Michel's background. Um, Michel has been working for UNESCO for several years already and is currently acting as advisor and head for communication and information at the regional office for West Africa, Sahel. And um, Michael, Michel, we very much invite you for your keynote, OER integration in West Africa, Sahel, experience challenges way forward. And if you have any questions during the session uh, for Michelle, please feel free to post them in the chat and we will take open the floor for questions after the session. Thank you very much. A warm welcome once more, Michelle, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, uh, Joanne, for the opportunity of this session. I uh, will start by uh, sharing uh, my screen. Yes. So um, it's my pleasure to share with you some insights related to OER integration in West Africa Sahel. And I'll be also be focusing on the experience that we had for the past two to three years and some of the challenges and the way forward in terms of our continuous intervention uh, that uh, is related to the implementation of the OER recommendation adopted by UNESCO in 2019. So first of all, uh, when I uh, speak about uh, West Africa Sahel, um, you know, uh, depending on the organization, uh, Sahel may mean uh, different thing, but uh, in this specific context, uh, we have been focusing on the four countries uh, which are the signal on the screen, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Senegal. These are the four countries where we have been focusing. And for many reasons, these are all uh, French, uh, predominantly speaking country. Uh, the reason being that um, the development of OER uh, seems to have been um, uh, uh, well advanced in English speaking countries than in French speaking countries. Reason why, though we have English speaking countries that we cover in the region, we decided to focus on uh, the countries where the need for OER development is uh, the, more, the most uh, needed. Um, my presentation will somehow be short. I will start by uh, uh, situation presenting the context of Sahel where we are undertaking this initiative and also uh, presenting shortly uh, the OER recommendation adopted by the member states of UNESCO in 2019. And I'll after that delve into uh, our Sahel OER initiative and presenting objectives and the process. And after that, I will uh, uh, um, pay uh, an attention to the case of Burkina Faso, which is uh, somehow specific. Uh, Burkina Faso is where we have piloted some of uh, our intervention, and I would like to share that. And after that, uh, I will also uh, shortly present the action plan for OER in Sahel that was devised uh, at the end of last year, and that we are now trying to uh, put in implementation before uh, going to my concluding remark. Now, um, uh, it, it should be noted uh, when we are talking about the Sahel, as I said, uh, we are talking about these four countries, uh, both of Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Senegal. Uh, these countries uh, have a population mostly young. 50% uh, of the population are under 15 years old. Uh, which means that the, the, the need for quality education is particularly important in this part of the world. 
And um, there is also, unfortunately, a high uh, unemployment among youth. Um, there is, as most of us know, the deterioration of the security environment in the, in the region with all these, uh, what has been called terrorist attack and all these conflict going on in the region, and which are undermining social cohesion and also the development prospect in the region. Uh, beside the insecurity, we have this context of COVID-19, uh, which has also been affecting uh, the worsening, contributing to worsening the situation. And in some of the region, particularly in Burkina Faso, Mali, and in part of Niger, schools have been closed. Many schools are closed in the, in the conflict affected areas. And uh, uh, some of the youth have to uh, live in a displaced area uh, and therefore with no access to education. Uh, when we look also to the statistic in the region, there is uh, the quality of education is low, and there is among the reason of why the quality of education is low is the low access to educational resources, quality educational resources. However, um, uh, there are, uh, regarding the ICT development, why I'm referring to the ICT, uh, it's because uh, whenever uh, we know that we are, we have never been what it is today without internet. Internet that allows the sharing of open educational resources. Uh, generally, open educational resources are easily uh, share and use when uh, they are in digital form. And for the country to benefit from or, or, or digital OER, uh, there should be a quality uh, ICT infrastructure. Uh, fortunately, in the region, there are some countries like Senegal uh, where the ICT integration uh, has been uh, quite positive, even though for the other countries, it's not the same. And also there are um, discrepancies among region within each country in terms of access to ICT. Um, as I said at the beginning, our initiative is related to the open educational resources, uh, which is uh, linked uh, to the adoption in 2019 by member state of UNESCO of the recommendation on OER. Uh, that recommendation uh, aimed at uh, supporting inclusive and quality education uh, toward the uh, uh, achievement of the um, sustainable development goal uh, objectives number four. Um, and also to increase uh, the uh, inclusive knowledge societies. We want to ensure that through access to open educational resources, uh, uh, we, can we can materialize uh, a knowledge society, an inclusive knowledge society, because by being open, it allows everyone to enjoy the uh, open educational, uh, the educational resources. The recommendation itself uh, has uh, a few lines of action. And the first is about uh, developing the capacity to create and adapt and use open educational resources. And uh, many of our interventions fall within this uh, line of action about building the capacity of teachers, of, uh, um, uh, lecturers, uh, curriculum development on how to actually create, adapt, and use open educational resources. The other line of action is related to policy, how to uh, ensure that the policy environment is conducive to the development and integration and effective use of open educational resources. And this is something that we also, in, within our initiative, we have tried to achieve. And the third line of action is to ensure that the access to open educational resources of the, is inclusive and equitable. Um, and the other line of action is to ensure that the model related to the development of open educational resources is sustainable. And, and this is 
very important because uh, uh, without sustainability, we cannot actually achieve the objective that we are trying to reach through uh, the implementation of the recommendation. And the last is related to building international cooperation uh, uh, for uh, open educational resources. So our uh, SIEL OER initiative is aligned with four of these main lines of action, uh, as you will see when I will dive into these, uh, these uh, the presentation of the SIEL OER initiative. So first of all, the objective of our SIEL OER initiative is to raise awareness on the importance of and the potential of open educational resources. We, and I'll uh, in a, also explain to you why this comes as one of the key objective of our initiative, because we conducted some preliminary study, studies to, to, to define all these objectives. And also uh, we wanted to develop within the silent countries that we, have, we are targeting, a pool of expertise uh, with people who have the capacity to design and implement the policy uh, related to the implement to uh, the OER. And this is quite important because uh, what we have found was that uh, even though there was interest in uh, open educational resources, many of the countries lacked the expertise to actually translate the recommendation into concrete uh, continuous um, policy and also operational action. We also want through our initiative to promote the use of open license, uh, which is key to uh, open educational uh, resources. And uh, finally, the third objective is to promote the integration and the use of open educational resources in different areas, namely uh, inclusive and quality education, innovation, Youth skills development. We want to. We uh, where we are of the view that open educational resources can benefit more areas than just education uh, sector. So we wanted to 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 ensure that this understanding is made available to uh, people in the design to um, policy makers and then uh, uh, the different stakeholders in the Sahel region. Now, here is the process of how we uh, end up with, we started with the, the OSIL OER strategy and where we are so far. Uh, we started with some preliminary studies uh, because there is actually in our understanding a good link between uh, the level of ICT competencies and the ability to actually create, adapt and use open educational resources which most of them are actually are generally in digital form. So we started with a preliminary study uh, to understand uh, what is the level of ICT competency for teachers in the region. And then after that, we conducted a second uh, study on the level of integration, knowledge, uh, use, understanding of OER in the SIEL. Uh, following that first stage, we came out with a set of uh, uh, observation that I'll, in the, in the next slide, present some of the findings to you. We move forward with piloting uh, OER integration in Burkina Faso. The reason why we were in Burkina Faso is because the country requested we presented the initiative in Burkina Faso and the country requested that we support them as they were in the process of establishing the virtual university of Burkina Faso. And, uh, they saw in the open educational resources uh, a great potential to, uh, uh, for the virtual university that they, are, they were actually uh, uh, set, setting, setting up. And, Following the piloting of the OER integration in Burkina Faso, uh, we move on now developing an action plan for the, 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 the four countries that we are targeting. And 
um, uh, the, in order to in, to to uh, uh, develop the action plan, we started with identifying with the government of the different countries focal point. And focal point were not, not just coming from the education sector. We encourage the country to appoint focal point through the national commissions of UNESCO uh, to appoint focal point from different sectors: curriculum development, higher education, youth. Uh, Ministry of Youth and, and uh, Higher Education, Ministry of uh, Basic Education, and so on. So we end up having uh, many um, focal points from these uh, different institutions and uh, sector who uh, form the team of the focal point with whom we worked toward the development of an action plan of OER integration if in the side. So once the, 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 the team of focal point was set, uh, we move forward conducting survey with the focal point and also with uh, the institutions that they represented on the level of uh, understanding and use and development of OER as well as if they perceive any benefit or any opportunity for them to benefit from the use of open educational resources. And uh, the finding of these survey led to the organization well, was presented during a series of consultation with the focal point and out of the, the, the discussion came out the formulation of the action plan that we are actually uh, implementing. And this, all this initiative uh, is in partnership with uh, uh, many organizations such as uh, Open Educational Resources Africa, such as uh, ICD and uh, the ministries of education in the region. So we have been collaborating with all these uh, entities in the development of uh, this uh, implementation of this SIL OER strategy. So now, as I said about, uh, I was talking about these uh, preliminary studies. Uh, the preliminary studies, for instance, of o on OER, some of the findings uh, were that the development of online teaching and learning offers, we found that there was an increased uh, presence of online teaching and learning offers in the, in the, in the region. Uh, I think today almost all the five countries have their virtual universities. We have one in Mali, in Senegal, and in Burkina Faso. So all of them have moved toward uh, developing uh, open education, uh, our virtual university, which in our view is an opportunity for OER. Um, but we also find that while these countries are moving toward developing or establishing virtual university, generally there is lack of strategy for OER. So uh, in the, among the different countries. Uh, we also find that there was limited or ad hoc use of open educational resources among teachers, among lecturers from uh, secondary education uh, as well as higher education. There was also uh, from our uh, study, uh, we discovered that for many, there was this poor understanding of what OER is. There was somehow confusion between free resources and open educational resources. And um, because on, on, uh, free resources, is uh, educational resources is about cost. Open educational resources is about license, the types of license that is assigned to the resources, even though open educational resources are naturally free, but <clears throat> free in terms of cost, but it comes with uh, a license that allows no limitation for use, adaptation, sharing, and so on. And we also, in our study, we find that there were limited to no incentive for the development of OER. The country, which is understandable because the, actually there is no strategy, there is no policy, uh, there is no initiative, major initiative uh, at government level related to uh, open educational resources. 
On the ICT competency framework uh, for teachers, for teachers that uh, um, we also found that there were elements of ICT competencies in existing teacher curriculum of the, and I want to mention this, that the ICT, the, the uh, analysis on the ICT competencies for teachers um, was conducted only in Senegal, not all the, all the five countries, it was only in Senegal um, uh, due to limited resources. So we focus only on Senegal and teacher training institutions in Senegal to understand the gap between the ICT competencies delivered through the, exist, the existing curriculum of teachers and the set of competencies defined in the UNESCO ICT competency framework for teachers. And we found that there was, though there were elements of ICT competencies in existing curriculum, the gap between those elements and the set defined by UNESCO in the ICT competency framework for teachers was somehow why. So this is the context. Um, these are some, some of the findings that uh, directed us in the development of our OER strategy uh, initiative. Now, regarding the piloting in Burkina Faso, I will say that, as I, as I say this at the beginning, is that this was a request from in, in Burkina Faso. So uh, in piloting the initiative in Burkina Faso, uh, we worked with uh, the University Virtual du Burkina Faso, which is uh, the virtual university in Burkina Faso, and the Ministry of Higher Education. So in collaboration with these two uh, institutions, we started by promoting understanding of what OER is, what's the potential, what's the benefit of OER among uh, higher education teachers. And then we move on in developing the capacity of teachers, public and private uh, uh, lecturers of higher education uh, in the development and adaptation of open educational resources. And following that, uh, the university uh, the, the virtual university of Burkina Faso, um, uh, no, following, following the workshop, participants at the workshop found that were of the view and recommended a national strategy for OER because according to them, uh, if there is no government commitment for open educational resources uh, uh, with mechanism for incentive toward the development of and use of open, open educational resources, they were in doubt that there will actually be uh, uh, more engagement or interest from lecturers to actually resort to open educational resources. Uh, uh, because of that, uh, we reached out to the Minister of Education, who was uh, also in favor of developing a national strategy. So we supported the country in the development of the, the national strategy for open educational resources in Burkina Faso. The document was uh, analyzed with the participation of multiple stakeholders throughout the country from public and private uh, higher institution. And um, uh, the document was later adopted by the government and the University of Virtual du Burkina Faso was appointed to lead the implementation of the, 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 of the strategy. Now, what is in the strategy? In the strategy itself, uh, aim, the aim of the strategy is to promote the production, use, and integration of quality open educational resources in higher education in Burkina Faso. So, though it is a national strategy, it focuses only on higher education. We're not working on the secondary or education, even though uh, there is possibility of adapting so, uh, such strategy to fit uh, with the need of uh, secondary uh, education at the level of education and even vocational uh, training. And uh, the strategy uh, has six objectives. The first 
was to support public investment in IT and broadband infrastructure to provide equitable access. This is, the first objective is directly linked to the issue of um, equitable access to quality open educational resources. This is the challenge. And this will also raise, once again, uh, during the forum, the ministerial forum that we organized that I will we'll talk about later. So uh, the, the, part of the, the, the government recognized that it's important to increase access to I, I, uh, information technology as well as internet. Because uh, uh, as most open educational resources are in digital form, uh, without access to IT, uh, a part of the population will be disadvantaged in uh, regarding the benefit of open educational resources. The second objective uh, was to raise awareness of open educational resources concepts and practice among all stakeholders. They were of the view that it's important to ensure that a different level of the higher education, uh, the people are well aware of what open educational resources are, what are the potential, how they can benefit the education, the higher education in terms of teaching, in terms of research, in terms of innovation. The third uh, objective was to encourage the government to update the legal framework on copyright because um, the existing legal framework of on copyright is highly restrictive. There is no uh, um, possibility for open like for applying open license li licensing uh, in in the country. So they were of the view that it's important that in the implementation of the strategy, the government consider reviewing. Uh, the existing legal framework on copyright to support the creation and adoption and integration of OER through uh, the use, the resorting to um, uh, open license. Not only by uh, the lecturers, but also by the government itself so that the government can start uh, uh, resorting to open license in its own production. There was also this objective to build the capacity of academic staff uh, in the production, adaptation, and use. So the continuous capacity building of these uh, target group in the use, adaptation, and uh, exploitation of uh, use of, of open educational resources. And um, one last point that was a subject of uh, a lot of debate was related to the quality of the open educational resources because there is this um, no central body to control uh, open educational resources. There was a concern among lecturers that uh, uh, because anyone can actually engage in the development or in the adaptation of open educational resources, how to ensure the quality of, of uh, um, uh, educational resources. So in the strategy, they recommended that for the higher education, uh, there should be uh, a mechanism for quality assurance of open educational resources developed in the context of higher education to uh, throw the adoption of uh, relevant policy. So these are some of uh, the element of the national OER strategy in Burkina Faso. Now, I say that once the strategy was adopted, um, the government decided to appoint the ministry, the university virtual in Burkina Faso to lead the implementation of the recommendation. But however, uh, so far the uh, the, the virtual university in Burkina Faso is still in the process of being uh, created. It's still in the creation process. So 
Um, it means that since the, develop, the adoption of the national strategy, its implementation has been low, has been weak. And I, I, I think it has not yet uh, been, the implementation has not yet started actually uh, because of this issue of the, uh, the entity in charge of leading the process being on the creation. They are yet to have uh, all the legal recognition in the country to operate as standalone university. So this is some of the challenges that we have regarding the Burkina Faso in the implementation of the OER strategy. But we believe that this is a way, this is a great opportunity because once the university virtual will be operat fully operational, they will be able to rely on this uh, strategy to move forward in the integration of the, the, the strategy. So, because Burkina Faso is actually, uh, in my knowledge, the only country uh, in Africa uh, with a national strategy on open educational resources, um, which is, I think, uh, something very positive. Now, uh, regarding the development of the action plan, Based on the experience from OER, uh, on, in, on, the pilot, on piloting OER in um, Burkina Faso, uh, we went on, as I said, uh, reaching out to the target countries of the region to compose a um, pool of focal point uh, with whom we were to work in the elaboration of a comprehensive strategy for the implementation of the OER recommendation in the region. So uh, following all the process that I've described earlier, uh, we finally elaborate an action plan with the, the following uh, uh, line of action. The first one was to strengthen the capacity of stakeholders to create and, uh, and use uh, open educational resources and the, under this line of action there was an emphasis on raising awareness potential of open educational resources at higher level, at higher level because participants were of the view that without unless those at the policy level uh, or unless there is a buy-in of those at the policy level of educational resources uh, it will be difficult for them to actually uh, uh, engage in the implementation of the recommendation in the, in, in the sector. So there was this as aspect on raising awareness, and then the second aspect is on building the capacity. Uh, the other point is um, uh, elaborating supportive policies. Uh, uh, as I said, we have the example in uh, Burkina Faso because the, the, the strategy, uh, in, uh, the national strategy of OER in Burkina Faso it was contained some very interesting suggestion um, on what the government can do to actually create incentivize people in the use and development of open, open educational resources. Um, and the other uh, line of action is to encourage um, inclusive access to open educational resources to promote the creation of open educational resource sustainability models. Uh, which all the, uh, these are actually aligned with the OER recommendation main lack of action. And finally, to uh, strengthen the cooperation uh, between uh, the partnership. We have, uh, as I said, we have these uh, partners with whom we are working, OER Africa, ICD, and the International Bureau of Education, the UNESCO International Bureau of Education, which are some of the entities with whom we are uh, collaborating in the implementation of the action plan. So the action plan was finalized at, was at the end of last year, following a series of consultations with the government. And since then, uh, despite the, 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 the challenge uh, from the COVID-19, um, we have been able to secure the organization of one important action that was 
actually called for by the participant. This action of raising awareness at high level on the importance and potential of educational research. And this, we organize um, a ministerial forum. We organize, initially it was to take place in June, 2020, but uh, because of uh, a terrorist attack in Burkina Faso a few days, uh, two days before, uh, we have to postpone it to October. So it happens uh, in October, 2021. And, uh, we have ministers from Senegal, from Mali, from Burkina Faso, from Niger, and also a representative from the Minister of National Education in France who participated to the, to the, to the forum. And during which we take the opportunity to present the recommendation, to have them discuss the potential and the importance of open educational resources. And we have ministers not only for the educational sector, we have also for higher education, we have also for youth. So we have them to discuss this, uh, the potential of uh, open educational resources, not only for the education, in the education sector, even though at the end it, it was dominated by the, by the education sector, but uh, we also discussed. Hello, Michelle, welcome back. Oh, thank you. I don't know what happened. I was just off. Not a problem at all. Okay, thank you. Um, as, as I say, uh, following the, 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 the forum, there was this uh, consensus that OER has a high potential for improving the quality of education in Israel. And the minister were of the view that they are, uh, there is need for support to digitalize the educational resources, the many educational resources that are available, and if possible, trans, um, uh, convert those educational resources that are available in the region into open educational resources. Uh, there was also this consensus of the necessity to mutualize the effort in the development and creation of open educational resources. Because what is interesting is that once an, an, um, an, uh, an open educational resources is made available, it can benefit all. So the minister from the region were of the view that it's important to uh, mutualize expertise to materialize resources so as to benefit from this uh, combination of effort and expertise in, in, and as well and resources. Um, I will now, so yes, um, these are therefore uh, what I can say regarding our initiative so far. So we are uh, we have started with um, raising awareness of policymakers on the importance and potentials of open educational resources. And from our finding, from, from the conclusion of the forum, there is a momentum in the region uh, for uh, a favorable momentum for the development of OER or the implementation of the recommendation of OER. We need to, 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 to take this opportunity to actually push toward the implementation of our action plan. And there was this also, uh, as part of um, our observation from the region, about beyond the political willingness to exploit the potential of OER, uh, we continue to recognize that there is a limited expertise. Uh, in the in the targeted countries, so which is for us means there is a this is a call for action um, in terms of way forward. Uh, what we need to continue doing, developing the expertise in the target country uh, for the implementation of the OER recommendation. We also see in the region uh, an increase an increase of the investment in the production of open educational of 
uh, educational resources, not open educational, but educational resources. And we see this as an opportunity because uh, uh, it, it means by convincing government to resort to open license when developing open educational resources, there is a possibility in the region for government to actually fund the production of open educational resources. Uh, we also observe uh, this uh, development of virtual universities in the region for us. Uh, virtual universities can be uh, at the forefront of the consumption or the development of open educational resources. Though there is a need to advocate uh, these universities to actually develop and implement their strategy for uh, integrate open educational resources. And uh, we also observe that many young people are now resorting to online for their training. So there is a high potential if uh, uh, quality open educational resources in the domain that are of interest for young people in the region are available, these will actually contribute uh, to um, uh, help them develop their competencies in different or increasing their knowledge on, on various subjects. And also what we observe in the region, which from, our, um, from my perspective is a call for action, is the limited number of teachers with capacity to take advantage of uh, open educational resources. So um, these uh, opportunities and challenges uh, are in some way a call for action for us in the implementation of our action plan under the uh, We Are uh, um, initiative for Sarah. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>